Good evening. God bless you. Welcome to Wednesday night. Pastor, we're teaching as we dissect the word of God. We see what that says the Lord to us, his people, on today. I do make and praise God for another day, for this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and get into the word of God. If you would, bow your heads with me. Father God, we thank and praise you for another day, for another Wednesday night Bible study. God, open up our ears to hear what thus said the Lord, our understandings, so we may know how to apply the word which you have given us. And God, I ask that you would not let your word go out and return void, but you would let it accomplish everything that you intended it to do. And God, as I decrease, I ask that you increase. You get all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We're going to go ahead and get into the word of God. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 9 and verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10. Hallelujah. Thank and praise God for you all who are tuning in to the Bible study. And pray that you will open up your ears to hear what thus said the Lord. And I hope that you will take this word today and apply it to your everyday lives. And, and uh, I was given confirmation. I was speaking with a friend of mine today, and he gave me confirmation on the word for tonight. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and the word of God reads as, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 10, which in time past we, he's talking about us. And verse 2 says, talking about you, give you a distinction of who you are, chosen generation, royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people, which in time past were not a people, but now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. May God bless the reading of his word. Since you are a chosen generation, uh, first thing I want you to know as you're listening that uh, this is a self, a self check. Uh, you all have the potential, the amazing potential to accomplish great things in this life. There's, there's, uh, I've always, what I've, I've always said that there's more to serving God, living from God, than speaking in tongues, uh, being able to sing praises of Zion. There's more to this walk than saying that I am saved, I'm Holy Ghost filled, and I'm fine. There's more to living holy and righteous to God than just the little small things that we have surrounded ourselves with. You have the potential, the potential to accomplish great things in this life. Now, but to potential, potential, just because you have potential 
Potential without action is no good. Faith without works is dead. Faith without works. Listen, they go hand in hand. Uh, 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 have the potential. I know Brother Larry, he plays softball. Sister Terry, they both play softball. They have the potential to do great things on the softball field. But just because you're on the team and if you're not practicing, then you're not tapping into your full potential. Uh, just because you show up on game day, if you don't know the plays, if you don't know the position, if you haven't worked out with the team, if you have not gathered the, 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 the continuity the cohesiveness of a team, then you will be out there in the way looking completely lost now. But if they were to go and practice with the team, then they have that potential to do uh, great things on the softball field. It's the, same, it's the same thing if you are in school. The kids are starting school. I know the teachers, they started this, this week, right, Sister Tara? Uh, the kids, they'll be coming in this this uh the sixteenth Monday, they be coming and guess what? The kids, the children, they have the potential to do great things in school. But you have to apply. You have to what well, first of all, you have to get up, you have to go to school, you have to be in class, you have to take notes, you have to listen. Anything that you don't know or understand, then ask your questions. Uh, if, if you need extracurricular help, then guess what? They'll do that. If you need tutors, then find you somebody who knows and understands. Okay, but they have the potential. But if they just go to school just to hang out to see what my, my boys are wearing, my, what the girls are wearing, uh, to see who's in school, to see uh, who's on the football team or things of that nature, but they don't really apply themselves to learning just because they have the potential to be great minds, but it takes application, it takes dedication. So potential without action is no good. Now, four things that you must understand about your life, okay? We're talking about what God says about you. I was speaking with uh, uh, the brother you told me about today, the guy who was uh, talking with you all, okay? His name is Brother Raymond. Uh, he gave me a confirmation on the word tonight. A lot of times, we, 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 we don't value ourselves. Now, I know the Bible says that we shouldn't think any more highly of ourselves than we ought to. But then you also must not think more or less of yourselves than you should. There's got to be the perfect balance. And what's that balance? Well, that's simple. When you find out what God says about you, uh, he goes to some of the, the, the uh, homes, uh, the drug addict homes and where uh, the ranches where the men are staying and some of the women, they there and they go and they teach. And he was sharing with me that when he begins to minister to those men, and I, I've I felt the same thing when I would go out there to the boys' ranch. We're covering uh, men who were recovering from drug addiction, alcoholic addiction, and things of that nature. And I find out that it's the biggest deterrent is our own selves. We think that we are not worth anything. We've failed so many times, and we've messed up so many times, and we've fallen short so many times there is no self-worth there is no uh, uh there is no self-value that you have placed on your own selves so but we're here to learn out what god says about you it's not it's not even what you say about you it's not what your parents say about you uh, sometimes the mothers who are raising the children by themselves will see the characteristics or traits of a son in the of a father in their son and he said oh my gosh you're just like your no good daddy 
but that's how she sees him. And if we're not careful, then we'll place those same shortcomings in the minds of our children. But what you need to realize is what God says about you. And four things. The first thing he says is what? That you are chosen. Uh, you're not chosen, but you are literally selected by God. God took his time and chose you. Deacon Nash, he chose you. Uh, we haven't always done the right things in life. Yeah. Uh, but God still chose us. Now, if you'll turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter sef, uh, uh, 17. I do, is it, what's that, chapter 17? What I got on there, Sister Tara? 76. Okay, hold on one minute. I want to read this for you. All righty, and let me get it. I need you to see what God says. And if, if, if you can see yourself the way God sees you, let me make sure this is where I want. Yes, okay. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6 says this. For thou art a holy people. This is what God says. You are holy unto the Lord your God. The Lord your God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. This is how God sees us. Yeah, God actually chose us not to, he chose us to be a special people unto himself. The life that we live should be pleasing unto God. Yeah, so he said you have been selected. This is a chosen, not because of what you've done, not because of, 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 of your name, not because of the, your position in life, but because of mercy. How many can say thank God for mercy? Thank God for his grace. And so we thank God for all, listen, I thank God for selecting, if you knew my past, if you knew my history, it's amazing. Uh, I'm 56 now and when I was in uh, junior high school, uh, always in some, kind of, in some kind of mess. And some of the teachers, they had told my uh, sister Jackie years ago, a couple years back when she was teaching over at the Freshman Academy, when they found out that she was my sister. And they said, well, what is he doing now? They said, oh, well, he's my pastor. He's your what? I said, yeah. He, she said, oh, my gosh. They said, I never would have imagined Robert being a preacher because of what they saw out of me, what they saw the things that I did, how I was, how I carried myself. But again, it's not what people think. It's not what people say, but it's what God says about you. And God says that I am chosen because of mercy. The second thing he says is that you are a royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, it says, And ye shall be unto me, unto me, unto me. Again, it's all about God. A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak unto the children of Israel. Oh, yes. Now, you're a royal priesthood. In other words, you don't get saved just to sit around and come to church and claim your seat, the second row, third chair in. That's your seat every Sunday or every Wednesday when we come in. That's your seat. Well, we're not just saved to sit around. We are saved to serve. And we're saved to serve by the lifestyle that we live. I was speaking with my friend, Brother Raymond, today, and he said, oh, man, Pastor Grimes called me. I got to call him back. But then as he was driving, he saw this car on the road, and, he, and, and see, he does mechanic work as well. So he had to go, and he's hauling this person out of this, uh, out the road, out the ditch, this, that, and the other. I said, see, Raymond, you're already doing ministry. I said, it's not about being in the four walls. It's about being a help to some way 
to someone. And so that gives you an opportunity, you, even if you said nothing about God, but the light that you have shown unto them, that speaks volumes. So we're not just saved just to sit around. You are, we are what you call serving members. We are put here to serve. Uh, and then when we serve the way God tells us to serve, then that right there is giving God all the praise. Uh, so for this lady to know what I'm doing now from what I used to be doing, oh, my God. So, But I'm no longer that same God. I'm saved. I'm selected by God, and then I'm serving. I'm taking advantage of the gift that God has given me and the gift of eternal life. And the third thing that you need to know about you, you are a holy nation. Again, that's Exodus chapter uh, 19, verse 6. You are a holy nation. And the word reads, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. A holy nation. Nation. We're not just speaking of the local church on earth here, but it's speaking to all believers. When we have communion with one another, oh yeah, uh, when, when, when I see uh, uh, Deacon Jones in Walmart, I need to see him as someone who is living holy someone who is living righteous, someone who is walking up right before God. Yeah, so we have been selected. We are serving members, but then we are a society of members. There is nowhere I should go and see any of the members, and then they should not be living holy, walking holy, doing everything according to the word of God, not making God ashamed not embarrassing the church, not embarrassing yourself. There should be a spiritual connection that we have with one another. The last thing that God says about you is that you are a peculiar people. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, as you've noticed the pattern, the trend here is either Exodus 19 and 6 or Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It says, for thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord has chosen the Lord God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are upon the face of the earth. We should live above mediocrity. We should live according to the word of God. It says that we are above all the people. I mean, I'm not saying that, that we are better than anybody else. We're not to look down on anybody else, but the stance that we, that we have taken for God, the stance of holiness, the stance of righteousness, this is what the Bible says, that you are a peculiar people. Now, the word here, when you understand the word, different words have different meanings now, okay? It's not talking about a strange person. This is not, oh, so, yo, oh yeah, they're peculiar. They're strange. They are eccentrics. But this word, peculiar, it speaks of a people of possession that is God has purchased us by using Christ's blood for the ransom of our sin that's what this means this means that you are peculiar that means that you are safe members also it means that 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 that, that it is preservation we are being preserved by God remember I've, I've taught you all that one word in the Hebrew could have five or six or seven different meanings. In the Greek, in the English language, it means strange. But we're dealing with the Hebrew language. And so you have to understand the word here, peculiar, is a good thing. It means that we are safe. It means that God is preserving us. It means that God does not lose anything that he possesses. God does not lose that. Once we belong to God, then we are safe forever. And the only way you can be unsafe is you have to turn your walk, your back, your life on God. 
But as long as you are walking right, as long as you have been selected, as long as you are serving, as long as you are, you say you are a, a, amongst a body of believers, walking right, living right, then guess what? You are safe. You are protected. You belong to God. It does not matter what comes up against you. It does not matter whatever you're faced with. Guess what? God says you're safe, you're peculiar, and you belong to him. Those right there, those are the four things that you must understand about your life. This is not what man says about you. This is what God says about you. This is how God sees us. God said, I chose you. Not only did I choose you, chose you, you have been given royalty. You are holy. I see you as a holy nation and a peculiar people, a safe people. And as long as you're doing that, he said, in that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Again, the Greek word here, praises, it means so many other things. This deals with the Christian virtues. This deals with Christian virtues. And in other words, this is how we should walk before men. This is how we should act before men. Uh, we should be striving toward perfection and, and love and patience and truth and holiness and goodness and, and joy. We should have follow peace with all men. And then what it's saying is that you should show forth the virtues of him who had called you out of darkness. The fact that God called me out of darkness means that my faith should be increased. I should have peace in the middle of storm. Uh, my joy. Uh, thank God for the grace. Thank God for his goodness. Oh, my gosh. During this pandemic, and we're still in the Delta, uh, another variance, the Delta variance. But guess what? The praises right here, the virtues of what I'm going through and the life that God has given unto me, the pandemic does not affect how I treat people. It does not have any bearings on how I go through life, how I go through, how I go through the day. There's got to be justice. I still should be truthful. I still have to show love. Why? Because this, again, is what God is saying about me. He tells me that, that you should show forth the praises, the virtues of him. These are the characteristics. These are the attributes of God. And if we say that we have God and he lives in us, this is God. In other words, God is wisdom. God is knowledge. God is just. God is love. God is peace. God is grace, patience, holiness. All of these things are attributes of God. So if you say that you have God and God is in you, then the same traits, the same characteristic, the same attributes that we see in God, men should see in us. Men should see in us. It's, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, why are you always happy? Because I have the joy of the Lord. Why are you doing this? Because I have faith. Oh yeah, and guess what? This is just a few of the attributes of the Holy Trinity. There are a lot more things in God that we need to be exhibiting. It says so that we should show forth the virtues of him who called us out of darkness. Oh my gosh, listen here. The fact that God saved me and I'm no longer on my way to a devil's hell, but he called me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, verse 10 says this. All right, understand now. I'm trying to get you to understand now. Stop worrying about what people say about you. Stop focusing on the negativities that people say about you. Call you all kind of names. Say you're no good. You're not going to amount to anything. You're not going to accomplish anything. I told you, the first thing I told you is that you have the potential to accomplish what? great things in this life. But if you are, 
worrying about what people say about you, then there's nothing that you'll do because you're always listening to what people are saying about you. And what they say about you, it holds you back. What they say about you, it just, it, it just continues to keep discouraging you. But this right here in verse 10, it says, which in time past, we were not a people, but now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Mm. And so I thought, I said, wow, I said, well, I wasn't, but now I am. I wasn't, but now I am. What do you mean I wasn't? Well, I wasn't a people of God. I wasn't saved. I wasn't living for God. But the fact that he had mercy on me, the fact that he chose me, the fact that he gave me some status and made me a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and he made me safe. He made me secure. He has made me a peculiar people. So in time past, oh my gosh, I was absolutely nothing. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hosea chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. I don't know if that's on there, Tara. Is that on there or not? Okay, then they, were, they should have their Bibles anyway. Hosea chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. Uh, Trying to tell you what you were or what you wasn't, but then to let you know what you are. Hosea, after Daniel, Hosea in the Old Testament, it says in verse chapter 1, verse 9 says this. That's right, Mother Nash, not just a priesthood, but I'm a royal priesthood. God, is, God has put his stamp on me now. Verse 9 says, then, God, then said God, Call his name Loami. And that word Loami means not my people. Now, when you read Hosea, chapter 1, I do believe it's in verse 2, he told Hosea to go down and then to marry a, a, a lady of a whoredom, a prostitute. And then go down and marry a prostitute and have some children, and your children will be of a whoredom as well. He said, because the children, my children, the children of Israel, they have left me, and they went a whoring after other gods. So God had to let Hosea feel what he felt. He had to feel what he felt. So he told him to go down. Call his name Loami, which means not my people. Verse 9 says, for ye are not my people, I will not be your God. But thank God, verse 10 says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place wherein it was said unto them that you are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. That's why I said I wasn't, but now I am. I wasn't a child of God, but now I am a son of the living God. Hosea chapter 2, verse 23 says, And I will sow unto her, and I will sow her unto me in the earth. And I will obtain, I will have mercy upon her that have not obtained mercy. And I will say unto them, which are not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. That's what I say. I wasn't, but now I am. Yeah, let me finish this up. We're going to get up out of here. But this is what God says about you. Back to verse 9. Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past you were not a people, but now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. There are three things that I need you to understand here about 
this salvation. Three things that I need you to understand about salvation right here. The first thing is this. God called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh, the fact that you have been redeemed means that you have been moved uh, uh, judiciously from being guilty to being innocent. We are all guilty of sin, but the fact that God redeemed us with his son on the cross, we have moved from darkness to light. Uh, it's moving my destiny from hell to heaven. Uh, now, it's easy to go back into darkness when you start thinking about the things that you came out of. But God says, listen, to it. no, I called you out of darkness. I called you out of darkness. You didn't come out on your own. How many times have I told you I wasn't trying to come out of sin? Sin was fun to me. I, I enjoyed it. And the reason, I, the reason I can say I enjoyed it because I stayed in it for so long. I enjoyed the sin. But then when God called me out of darkness, why would I go back to a life of sin and to a life of darkness when he called me out of darkness on my way to a devil's hell? So I thank God for the call. The second thing is, now, he just doesn't call you out of darkness, but then he also gives you membership into salvation. There are some country clubs around the area, some country clubs around the country that you might want to go and play golf there, but unless you are a member there, unless you've paid the price, you paid the dues for that, Oh, man, I'm sorry. You can, all you can do is want to get in, but you won't be able to get in. He said, but so, but now that he called me out of darkness, then I have membership into salvation. It says, but are now the people of God. That means I, I have gained membership into heaven, into salvation. Now, understand this now. We are related to God through what? Through creation. We are all related to God through creation. Now that relationship that, that counts is the relationship that comes not through creation, but through salvation. That's what makes us the people of God. The Bible says that all souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth, it shall surely die. Oh, yeah, so we are created because there's only one God. He created us, so we all have some kind of relationship to God. It does not matter. Uh, save and unsaved, we are all created in his image and after his likeness. But through sin, that came the separation. So we'll still be related. Thank God for the relationship, but then what about the relationship that comes through salvation? A lot of people in hell are burning who have been related to God. That's just creation. Satan and the angels, the one-third of angels in heaven. Hello? But when you read who he was, when you read that he, he was the governor over earth, when you read that in his voice, his voice box, were majestic pipes, when you read how he was arrayed with beauty and the stones and the pearls, yes, when you see who he was, but then when you see the pride, that was found in him. What that did is that severed the relationship with God and Lucifer. And in turn, that 
cut the relationship between man and God when Adam sinned. When Adam sinned. But thank God, thank God that the relationship has been restored through salvation. That's what he says. That's what makes us the people of God. And the last thing I want you to understand is that I told you all that there's nothing that we have done that we have earned. There's no merit that we have done. But it is God's mercy. It is the mercy of God. It says, now have obtained mercy. Hallelujah. Thank God. Salvation is all of divine. When it's anything that you say divine, that means the Trinity. That means attributed to God. That means only God. Divine, only God can give mercy. And that's divine mercy. There is nothing that a human, there's nothing that a man, there's, there are no more sacrifices that we can do and give to merit salvation but it's God's divine mercy hallelujah yeah oh yeah so I thank God for his mercy this is what God when you when you know who you are and when you understand what God says about you oh yeah we read this scripture we can quote this scripture but as I was talking to many people this week and a lot of them have no self-worth. One of the good friends back in Florida, uh, there was a word given to him that God said that he needs to repent. He needs to repent. And I was talking, talking to a friend and I was telling her, I said, the sad part is when we say, Yes, uh, I have a word for you from the Lord. And so, oh, yes, oh, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, because you always got a word from me. You always got a good word. Now, we want the good words from God. What do you mean? Well, God's going to heal your body. God's going to give you a raise. God's going to do this. God's going to do that. God's going to do this, that, or the other. God's going to bless you. He's going to bless you to get married. He's going to bless your children. Uh, I mean, everything like he's going to bless you with a house. God's going to bless your ministry. Oh, yes. Oh, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. But now, he was given a word that God says, you need to repent. But then there's always excuses with why. You make excuses. Well, the reason I did this, the reason I did Well, okay, but what greater word? What greater word than it says to repent? That's greater than all the riches. When God says to do this, then God says to do that. If God says it, then God sees, I, listen, I'm just the messenger. The men of God, the women of God, we are just messengers of God. Now, our job is to tell you what thus said the Lord. Your job is to accept it and receive it. Now, if you can receive that, a lot of times I was sharing with them, I said, man, I was driving Bishop Williams down to Orlando, and we were on a road, and we were no, coming home from Orlando, and home uh, uh, in Lakeland, Florida. He said, "He said, Uncle Yogi. He said, every time God is close to blessing you, He says you'll do something stupid, and then you'll mess up, and then you got to start all over again." Now I could have took that anyway. I could have took it and got an attitude about it and say he don't know what he's talking about or I took it and I said yes sir yes sir and I began to pray and I began to fast God show me the errors of my ways God help me to do this help me to stop doing this God deliver my soul from this deliver my flesh from, my flesh from this Help me to stop getting an attitude. Help me to stop doing this. Help me. Whatever it was, whatever I needed, God, listen, I covered everything. I would let nothing out 
oh my God, whatever it was that I needed from God, I want to make sure that the next time that God has gotten ready to bless me, that I was in the right path for the blessing. I got tired of being stuck on stupid. Oh yes, but it took a word of God for me to see the errors of my ways. Now, the thing is this, if God gave you a word, it's not for you to dispute the word if you say that you trust God and you believe God. Yeah, I could have disputed it, but I know what he said was true. Hey, okay, Graham, stop being stuck on stupid. Stop doing dumb things. Walk right, live right, serve God, and watch God begin to bless you like never before. And guess what? Deacon Nance, I, I got off of stupid. Got tired of being stuck on stupid. And God has, been, God has been doing nothing but blessing, but blessing, but blessing. Matter of fact, he's, he's blessing this church. Told you all on Sunday that uh, a man donated $150 to the church. He said that this church was not one of those churches during the pandemic who would not see about the members. He was complaining about all churches, but thank God for the member who stood up for this church, in other words, stood up for God and said, well, no, uh, not my church. We're, we've paid bills. Uh, I've given money that even the church don't know about it. I don't have to tell about it. I don't have to brag about it. I don't have to tell nobody. It's, oh, yeah, Mother Nancy, I gave, uh, 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 I used Brother Larry over here. I didn't, you know, by using him as an example. I said, Mother Nancy, I gave Brother Larry $200, so I need my money back. Or, uh, 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 or I bought Deacon, Deacon Nance a steak, so I need you to pay me back for that steak. When Texas Roadhouse, Deacon, got that bone-in rib out. Mm. With that baked sweet potato, give me some extra bread, some extra rolls, or something, a nice vegetable. Vegetables just, you know, so I won't feel like a glutton. All right. <laughs> but, I want, I, but I need my money back, though. No, I ain't do that. They don't know what I did. The, y'all don't know what I did, but God knows. The things that are done in secret... God says, he'll reward you openly. That's what I'm excited about. So the man, he blessed the church last week with $150. Well, guess what then? I got another call this week, D. I spoke with one of the business owners in this world, he wants, and everybody wants to be anonymous. I love people who don't want credit, who don't want their name published. Well, this man uh, uh, said, I met him on Monday. We had a talk. He said, well, yeah, I want to be able to bless your church. And this, then he said, well, uh, I said, well, you know, uh, if there's some work that we need done around the church, he'll do that. This, I said, well, right now we've done so much. Now we're not, we don't have any more projects for the rest of this year. I said, so, but if you wanted to donate some money, we can add that to our account. He said, well, you know what? That's, that's what I was thinking. I said, okay, then. And then I didn't give him a figure. He said, he said, well, I'm thinking about 5000 What do you think? I said, oh, okay. I'm thinking about 5000 too. <laughs> listen, I mean, listen, when God, when, God, when God begins to bless you all, um, I want to help you out again, saints. You are the members here at uh, First Church of God in Christ. The first thing that I said when I first got here five and a half years ago, I said, God's going to bless this church. All right, he's going to bless the church. Why? Well, simple, because I was obedient unto God when I left Florida, established working for the state of Florida. And that's good money, good pay, good retirement. Okay? Working for the state of Florida to uproot and then relocate here for the ministry state. And God said, the fact that you obeyed me, I'm going to bless you. But don't you know if God is blessing the leader, then he's blessing the members. But you have to be giving in a place to be blessed. And I've told you all, I said, God's going to bless this ministry here. I said, but I want you all to be the ones on the blessing side on the receiving side, which means on the giving side. You have to give in order to get. You all have been doing wonderful, been wonderful. 
for the most part. Uh, you know, in the church, not everybody's giving, and that's fine. You know, that's just, this, this is the perfect church. There are no perfect churches. Jesus didn't have perfect churches, uh, you know, anything like that. But I want you all, the members here, to understand that God is going to continue to bless this ministry. And if he can't use you, then he'll use somebody else. And so far, in the past two weeks, we've got $150, and now we've got 5000 coming. I don't know when it's going to come, but it's going to come when it comes. It's not coming to me. It's going to the church. Yeah, because it's not, it's not my money. It's the church's money. Now, if he just said, well, Pastor Ground, God told me to bless you with $5,000. I said, okay, then. Then I would have took that. But you got to realize, God's going to bless this ministry. I need you all to be guilty of being in the way of a blessing. Amen? Amen. So understand this. Read this again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But you are a chosen generation, the royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Bow your heads. Father God, we thank and praise you now for your word. God, help me to understand what you say about me and not what people are saying. Help me, God, to see me as you see me. And God, I'll thank you for the word. I thank you for the members. I thank you for the ones who have heard the word. I thank you for the ones who are guilty of obeying the word, who are guilty of doing the word. And for the ones who are not God, I ask you to touch their hearts. Touch their minds, God. Open up their ears to hear what you have said tonight to the churches, to your people. God, if there is any of us who are not saved, God, forgive us all of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God, and give us a new walk. God, if there's any sick among us, touch, heal, deliver, and set free. We'll be forever to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Saints again, it's what God says about you. And when you can walk and understand what he's saying about you, go ahead and read this again. Go back and revisit these scriptures again. Because you weren't, but now you are. You weren't a people of God, but now you are. You didn't have mercy, but now you do. That's what God says about you. And anything that God says about me, I'm good with that. God bless you. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, uh, pay your tithe here. Uh, I don't get the tithe. The tithe belongs to God. I pay tithe. I'm guilty of paying tithe. I'm going to continue to be guilty of doing what the word of God says. Uh, if you'd like to bless this church, if you'd like to bless... The man of God, the pastor, I pray that God's blessing will be restored upon you a hundredfold. Hallelujah. We'll bow our heads. Father God, we thank and praise you now for the blessings that you have in store for the members of this church, God. God, we continue to ask that you'll continue to bless and strengthen, continuing to lead us, to guide us. Along the way, God, we thank and praise you, God, for this is your word. Help us to read what you say about us, not what man says about us. The only thing that's important, God, is what you're saying about us. And God, I thank and praise you now for what you've done and going to do. Continue to send your healing virtue throughout the land, throughout this church. Ones far and near, the members here who support this ministry, God. I thank you, God. I praise you, God. We we'll forever give your name the praise, God. And as we leave this place, but never your presence, 
Bring us back on the appointed time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen. Uplift the right hands. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch and pray. Live saved every day. God bless you. Remember, it's what God says about you. That is what's important. God bless.